Grizzlies fans, it's time for another game day update. Today, the Grizzlies will take on the Clippers again. Joining me again is Lil Murray. Are you ready to break this one down for the second I'm time? I'm ready. Okay, I'm so happy you're back because everything you said came true last game. So I feel like you know what you're talking about here. Let's get into this one. The Grizzlies are coming off a loss to the Clippers two days ago, 141-132. Um, I mean, 141 to a team that is not the highest scoring team in the world, in the league. Um, this game was without Paul George, Kawhi, Marcus Morris, Jaron Jackson Jr., Desmond Bain, Tyus Jones, uh, John Conchar. The list goes on. It looks like today for the Grizzlies, everybody's back. Like that should be back. Like obviously no Steven, no Brandon. Um, for the Clippers, I think Kawhi is like, he's been pushed up to questionable rather than out. PG still out. How different is this game about to be? I think it's definitely going to be different in terms of Memphis should have better defense personnel. They, they had an all rookie bench. They had a lot of guys in the starting lot. Well, they, they had guys in the starting lineup that know the deal, um, except maybe Luke. Um, Luke obviously just got there a month ago, a month and a half ago. It's the last day of March. Um, and the, the, the thing is, when you bring back Jerry Jackson Jr., you're bringing back the defense player of the year candidate, a really special, uh, unique kind of defender as well, someone who can protect the rim, but also stay out on the perimeter while um, not having the guard centers. When you bring back Desmond Bain, there's just a level of physicality with Desmond Bain that you don't really get with Luke. So Luke gets the most out of his ability, but Luke is not known for, and he'll tell you straight up. Uh, and you would Clippers. know because you right. covered him. Mm -hmm. Right. When Luke was with the Clippers and he was on the floor with guys like Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, the defense was fine. When he was on the floor with guys like Norman Powell and John Wall, uh, not so much. Um, you could pick your mismatch. And so when he's in the starting lineup, that's you just got to figure out who he's with. And he obviously wasn't with Jaron Jackson Jr. last uh, last game. And then off the bench, you got Tyus Jones. And one of the reasons why Tyus Jones is one of the best defense, uh, one of the best point guards in the league is because obviously everyone talks about assist -to turnover ratio when you talk about point guards. But steal to turnover ratio is, to me, equally as important. And Tyus excels there. And then you got Jaron Jackson Jr. who covers uh, Lance and Air with what he does defensively. But most importantly, he shuts down the rim. The Clippers got more points in the paint than they usually do, considering they also got the production from three. I mean, the Clippers did everything offensively except take care of the ball and get offensive rebounds. It's actually funny that the Clippers should have probably had 150 points with the transition opportunities that they gave away. Yeah, uh, and those were some of the things that I had brought up before the first game was that the Grizzlies obviously lead the league in points in the paint. They led that game 72 to 50. Um, but like you said, 50 points in the paint and 60% shooting on volume shooting from the three, including two guys who went 12 for 12 uh, in yeah. Russ and Robert Covington. That can't be a normal shooting night, right? Like I know that we haven't seen the Clippers a whole lot this year, but like that was crazy. It was incredible. I mean, that's the most threes without a miss in both Robert Covington's career and Russell Westbrook's career. We're talking 15 years of basketball, hmm. right, in the same game. Like, the most threes without a miss Rocco ever had was – and, and Russ was four out of four in their respective careers. But we're talking about two guys who've been in the league for yeah. 10 yeah. and 15 years. And the thing is, it wasn't just those guys. Like, yeah, those guys hit 12 threes. Their teammates hit 11. Bones Island came off the bench and was fantastic. He hit four threes. Who, this is a mid range heavy offense for the Clippers. The only non paint two that anyone made in that game was Robert Covington flipping off. He was hot all game, but like he just, he just hits this baseline floater off the, off the window. And that was a second chance opportunity. Roko doesn't take mid range shots like at all. When you're missing Marcus, Kawhi, PG, that's your mid-range offense. Like, no one else really has volume there. Everyone else is paint free-throw line, three-pointer, um, and for the most part, assisted three-pointer. So 
the the Grizzlies obviously uh Dylan Brooks is really upset because he wants stops in general but Dylan he pointedly said Wednesday night that the KYP knowing your personnel uh was not applied Wednesday night and I think maybe there's a little bit more respect to the shooting of of, of the Clippers okay so the shooting of the Clippers is going to be something to obviously keep an eye on tonight because as you said I think the Grizzlies are not they're going to make it a priority to not allow 60% from the uh from the three-point line you had touched on kind of rim protection Jaron is back so that just straight up will affect the the points of the paint like whether or not they're shooting and missing or just you know like he alters even like the thoughts like you can see people driving and kicking because Jaron's in the paint um so how do the Clippers score today? The Clippers are, well, Kawhi would help, but I'm not sure Kawhi plays. Um, he missed the last game as a late scratch. For personal reasons, he's listed as questionable. And I think it's an actual questionable 50-50. We got to figure out what we're doing because they play in New Orleans tomorrow, Saturday. And Kawhi Leonard hasn't played both games of a back-to-back since T. Lou's first year as the head coach. I'm not sure if, if Kawhi Leonard plays, that helps uh, because Kawhi scores in an area no one else on the team does, and he draws attention in a way that he can open up more shots. I, I think the Clippers, they're top five in the league offensively um, since that Grizzlies game, uh, March 5th. That's the thing about it. They are they, they are very sure what they're trying to do. Uh, it's just a matter of can they pull it off with personnel that I'm not sure they're going to have. Yeah, the Clippers are, and I've been saying this, like I think the Clippers are a team that could make it far if everyone is healthy and comes together. Um, obviously, that's the big question mark on tonight. Fill in this blank, one single like category stat. If the Clippers do blank well, they give themselves a chance to win. Rebound. Um, Memphis had 11 more offensive rebounds than them on Wednesday night, which that was, it was the complete opposite in LA. Mm -hmm. And when you combine that with the fact that even though Jai had eight turnovers, the Grizzlies still had three fewer turnovers than the Clippers did. Mm -hmm. So the Grizzlies didn't lose that game on possessions. They got 11 more opportunities, if you want to call it that. They just didn't defend the three <laughs> at all, anybody. <laughs> right. So the key for the Clippers besides the paint which we said Wednesday, look, the Grizzlies are going to score in the paint. Like, that's where they're going to get their shots. Um, but they, the, the Clippers, they are usually a better defensive rebounding team. They have struggled without uh, Kawhi and, and Paul, two of their best rebounders. And Marcus Morris, who doesn't rebound but boxes out. Mm -hmm. um, I think you saw that. Like, guys did not box out. They did not pursue to rebound well. Uh, the Grizzlies hurt them on second chance points, especially in the first quarter. Um, the that it will be an area priority for the Clippers, but the Grizzlies are a good offensive rebounding team. It's an interesting clash, and I love it when you get a team who is good at one thing, and then a Clippers, a team that is like, well, we're we're good at this thing too, and we need to be better at that than the last matchup. Gonna be a good one. This one tips off at seven. No, is it seven p.m. on a Sunday? Well, considering today's Friday, uh, I think that oh, it will God. be a. Yeah, I think it'll be a seven local tip. Have I lost my mind, Law? Is it gone? What's I mean, that? it's a lot of games. It's a lot of games. Friday. It is Friday today, everyone. Have a good day at work, everybody. The game tips off at 7 p.m. It's on Bally Sports and the Bally Sports Plus app. And the Hustle play, well, by the time this comes out, the Hustle will have played. But shout out the G League, shout out the NBA. Law, you are awesome. Thank you again for this morning, a Friday morning. Friday. I appreciate you so much. Hey, thanks for having me again.